If you get it, leave it in the comments. Uh, ignore the numbers on the rubber ducky. That was that was for something completely different. Hey, and if you get that reference, more power to you. But yeah, comment down below with either one if you get either one of them. So you guys might remember this thing, uh, the Dell Optiplex, the small form factor, I believe it's a 720 uh, SFF or something like that, it's a small form factor. It is the cheapest, basically it was the cheapest PC I could buy off of Amazon, not rated or not claiming to be a gaming computer of any type at all, uh, just the, the cheapest one I could find. And I believe it cost me like 150 bucks. Uh, I got it really quickly, it's actually a refurb unish, uh, refurbished unit from, uh, Refurb Banana, I believe it was. Uh, if it, I'll go ahead and I'll put it in the description on the screen or whatever where I got it from. But basically, it at the time that I bought it, uh, there was one other complete computer that was less expensive, but it was an older computer. Um, it was a, I believe, an older Core i3, and it uh, it couldn't do anything with DirectX 12. This was the first, the cheapest one I found with the DirectX 12 instruction set, and so that's the reason why I got it. It ran me like 150 bucks. Uh, we went through a couple of different things because obviously the graphics on here, it's not meant to be any kind of gaming PC. We wanted to see if we could turn it into any kind of gaming PC. Uh, the, one of the challenges is it did not have an HDMI port. So we had to find something with an HDMI port or just be stuck with, you know, you're running the mill VGA graphics, which, uh, yeah, that's you could barely play CSGO on something like that. So we've tried it with a couple of different things. We've tried it with uh, a GT730. Uh, currently it's holding a GT1030 in here right now. That 1030 is about the same graphics quality as uh, a modern day Ryzen 5600G, which does very, very well, especially for an APU and not having a graphics card. In other words, you can put it on 900 or 720p low settings and you could get you know in, in many cases 30 frames per second or better and in some cases you can get up to 60 frame, frames per second or better uh, uh, something like an esports title csgo will actually run over 90 frames per second so it's decent but we're going to do something a little different now i did sink in a couple extra bucks the i i paid too much for the 1030 to begin with but keep it in mind that we're trying to keep as low as we can and make a beginner or starter gaming pc out of it i was able to find something on newegg it was a little bit more expensive probably about 80 dollars more expensive than it should have been an rx 560. the main reason this rx 560 is different is not because of the color yes i can tell what color it is and uh, i don't know if i'm impressed by that uh, it's made by a company called yestin it is a low profile card Right now, if you're trying to find a low profile card, even a low profile, say 1050 Ti, you're gonna pay through the nose. Uh, these are available for a little over $200. And on Newegg, you can actually, if you qualify, you can actually, I'm not trying to give an ad for Newegg, but they do have a program where you can split it up. Their Zip program, where you can pay over four installments. It's a payment every two weeks. So if you're trying to spread the pain out a little bit and can't believe that you're going to spend $200 on a graphics card, I believe it's $225, I think was the least expensive I saw this, then maybe that's an option. You can spread it out a little bit that way. But in any case, that would bring the total for this computer to still under $400, and we'll see if we can't get it to game and maybe do, do pretty decent. The, the 560 ought to do pretty good. It's got 4 gig of DDR5 memory on it, and uh, it should hold up okay, especially if it, uh, I mean, the, the 500 series, the 400 series and 500 series cards were very good AMD cards. Uh, so we're going to see what happens. First of all, 20th anniversary, so that's nice, I guess. Uh, Yeston is not a graphics card or not a brand, not a brand I normally use or have used. I did get this because of the uh, description and because it's a low profile and I can fit it into that other uh, that other small build, that small form factor. I did already take the plastic off of here, so you guys don't have to hear it crinkling and all that stuff. It's a little bit easier to open up once I take the plastic off. Um, it is, there's not a whole lot in here. You can see it's kind of, kind of empty. It looks like the card itself. Uh, there is a bracket, so I can shorten it. That's cool. I can use it at low profile. And an owner's manual that is 
Um, yeah, there is one small section that's in English. The rest of it is in... It looks like it, the rest of it is in Chinese. So uh, that might be a little bit of a help, but I think I can get... I think I can figure out how to use a video card. That's not going to be much of an issue at all. And I think I can probably figure out how to change this bracket and how to fix it up. So uh, it's, it's wrapped pretty well, bubble wrap. And there, there's a whole lot of room in the box. But... All right, we managed to open it up. And like I said, if you clicked on the video, you already know what this looks like. But man, that is that is bright. Can you, you, there's something you can't, probably can't quite see on the camera. Maybe I'll shift cameras here. It's, it's I don't know, maybe it's picking that up. There, it looks like a, uh, a metal flake paint job on that. So it's, uh, it's interesting. It's not quite a solid color like I thought it would be. It is aluminum. It is pretty sturdy. Looks like the heat sink is pretty big. Uh, I will be able to take this bracket off and unclip the uh, regular VGA connector, so that's good. And doesn't seem to be any kind of issues. I won't have to have external external power. Obviously, it looks like it will fit in that small form factor, and I shouldn't have any issues putting it in that that Dell that uh, Dell Optiplex. It is thin enough where it's going to fit in there and not take up any extra room. So. Well, that's not the best look of that, is that? There, we'll try that. Um, that's what it looks like. That's what it is. So, carrying on. All right, you can kind of see how much room it takes up. It's not very much room at all. Um, I would have thought the airflow would be a little bit more restricted. There's not a whole lot of room to get airflow in there, but it seems to do okay with that fan. That fan looks like it's obstructed, but it does have a fair amount of airflow coming through. And the airflow that's coming off of the CPU cooler, it's all directed through this kind of a, I don't know, muzzle. I don't know if you want to, what do you want to call it, but it's all kind of directed through this little shroud here. That all of that CPU air blows out of the back, and all of the GPU air, air kind of just goes through here and gets pushed out. So the sides don't get very warm at all. The back, uh, I can feel a lot of heat coming off the back when it's uh, in the middle of gameplay and it's pretty stressed out. Um, but overall, it works out pretty well. It doesn't take up a lot of room. It is warm to the touch, but you're not supposed to be touching a warm GPU anyway. But um, usually on the games, when it's getting, it'll hit uh, 79 degrees or so Celsius. Every once in a while, it'll hit 80, but it stays working pretty well. And I'm ov overall, I'm very, very satisfied. Um, and I don't even mind the color because the side of the case will be on it and I don't have to look at it. So once again, following our usual behavior, I went ahead and ran the seven benchmarks like I normally do. Um, and we're, we'll go through, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time comparing, because we should be able to figure out that the RX 560 is going to do better than the GTX 1030, or GT 1030, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it, it's much, it's around the same time frame, but it is a better architecture. It is uh, a better GPU does have more memory on board, so you would figure that it would do well, and it and it does. So we're not going to spend a, a whole lot of time uh, harping on the differences. But what I did also do is I included the uh, the 5600, the Ryzen 5 5600G, into these as well with the the onboard graphics. Now different computers, but still to kind of show you how the uh, how that processor or how the video on that processor holds up or compares to a little bit older hardware that 5600g again is brand new and it was in the hp pre-built whereas this is uh we, we've taken that old dell and we've tried to do something with a small form factor so looking at the shadow of the tomb raider no surprises here where uh both the gt 1030 and the 5600 made playable experiences on on lower resolutions and uh you know even maybe 900p the uh, rx 560 actually gets close to 60 frames per second and in a game like this where it's uh like a, a rpg type thing instead of a shooter that does pretty well and uh it's a very very playable experience it's a very good experience that looks very good you can even play this on a, a little bit higher resolutions uh like 1080 medium to get around 30 frames per second. It's not listed here, but it works out pretty well, and I, I wasn't surprised at all by that. Uh, Borderlands 3, this is one of the places where the, the GPU did 
warm up a little bit. Although it didn't warm up as much as I thought it was going to. It hit about 70, I believe it was 78 here, uh, 78, 79. Uh, there are other places where it hit actually hit 80, but it never went above 80. So I was pretty happy with it Borderlands again. No surprise here on 1080p low you can uh, or 720p low you can get 60 frames per second You can get a, a very playable experience even at 1080p and it did pretty well I, I, I was pretty happy with that and you can see how everything kind of compares uh, a Far Cry 5, much the same story. You have a very playable experience, especially if you have a little bit lower resolution. It uh, even a decent, you know, well over 30 frames per second or over 30 frames per second at 1080p. So again, one of those that's um, very playable even at the higher resolution and and looks pretty good doing it. Very surprised so far. Not really surprised. Very pleased so far with the RX 560 being the small form factor or the low profile that it is. That it works as well as it does in here and um, even though it does heat up the heat doesn't seem to become much of a factor this is one of the games that unsurprisingly did heat up that gpu quite a bit and it stayed around 78 79 and touched adc a few times forza horizon 4 really did um, it but in its defense it, you could also run it on 1080p and you know get 60 frames per second so it, it really really did well it, it definitely outshined the 1030 and the 5600g but also i mean it um you know you kind of pay the price for that because it does get a little bit warmer i probably if if it stayed cooler it might have been a little bit higher i don't know but given that it's a small form factor in that tight case i was pretty pleased with those results i couldn't be upset with them at all world war z now that's the one that's a little bit of a you know just when you think everything's going predictably World War Z, and it did it when I was comparing the, the 1030 and the, the 5600 in the other computer, and here it does it again. It even it matched or outplayed the, 50, the RX 560 in 1080 and in 900. have no idea why that is. I, I have not been able to figure that out yet. Stayed very playable, very cool. Um, no issues at all. I, I don't know if it has something to do with that Vulcan APU or what might be going on, but really, really surprised at the performance of the 1030 in this game. But just when you think that that 1030 is going to have a leg up on the 560, yeah, we're brought back down to earth again. Horizon Zero Dawn just makes um, it makes the 560 look good now because you're you're still you you have a very playable experience, and it is. I mean, it looks good. Uh, it, this was another game where it touched that, you know, 78, 79, but we were getting a very playable frames per second, even at 1080. It, it did really well. And even at, when uh, the 1080, the higher settings, I was still getting well over 30 frames per second. So uh, not bad at all. I, I was very, very pleased and very happy with it. And then finally CSGO, which will run pretty much on everything. Uh, that's about what you expected. Uh, all these, all these did about the same or pretty well. And it, it's, I mean, if you can get 100 frames per second or thereabouts in CSGO, that's very playable, especially for an eSports title. And all these are run at 1080 with high settings. So, I mean, if, if you bumped it down to 900 or 720, I'm sure you could get a, a better, more playable, faster frames. But you should be able to play uh, CSGO at 100 frames per second, all right, and, and, and be pretty decent at it, especially on the monitor that, that's running on over there. It's a, it's a 60 frame, you know, it's a 60 hertz monitor. So 100 frames per second or thereabouts, very very playable very good it looked well i didn't have any kind of stutters any kind of issues or anything like that so it, it worked out really really well so basically the 560 rx 560 the four gig that low profile model works great in that dell uh it it makes that dell for under 400 dollars makes it a, a budget gaming computer i can't i can't argue with that it wasn't designed to be that way it wasn't marketed that way it wasn't sold that way but for 150 bucks for the computer itself and for you know you can get the the graphics card that rx 560 low profile for about 220 which is more than it should be but still it's a low profile low profile four gig card right now uh, to be able to get that put those together and still make it under 400 dollars, you've got yourself a budget you know a budget gaming pc and it's going to be able to do some other tests fairly well now, now do keep in mind that this is a four core Basically a four core, four, four thread CPU. You're not going to be able to put Windows 11 on it without doing some 
you know, playing around or with some messing with the registry or something like that. Um, there is not, did not see any way to be able to put a TPM module in there. And uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. This is, this computer is not going to be relevant, I don't believe, by the time, you know, when you, we get around to Windows 10 reaching its end of life. So I, I can't really say that I'm disappointed with this. But for the next year or two or two years, three years, um, and even maybe a little bit further into that, it, it does it does well. It's solid. It will play today's AAA games, and so I have no problem thinking that it would play older titles even better. And uh, to be that small of a space, be that kind of a niche type computer would be in a small form factor like that. And only supposed to be an office computer, we turn it into a gaming computer for not too much. And it, uh, I'm sure if I could put a little bit more memory in it, you know, if I upgraded the 8 gig of DDR3 with a little bit more, I could probably get a squeeze a little bit more out of it. Uh, that processor, um, it's that's about the, the highest or best processor that's going to go in there. Um, and the video card, there's no sense in putting anything there, in there higher than that RX 560. So, uh, overall, it's got uh, middle-of-the-road specs, but she's a budget gaming PC now, and I'm pretty happy with that, and I can't complain. So, if uh, you enjoyed the video at all, go ahead and throw a thumbs up on it. I'd appreciate that. Still trying to get 500 subs by the end of the year so I can start getting on these affiliate programs. If you didn't enjoy the content, or you found it boring or lacking, or whatever the case may be, or maybe uh, you just have a toothache, or you're in a bad mood today, or you didn't get your coffee, you can leave the thumbs down, but let me know why, so I know whether you need more sugar in your coffee or whether you need to call a dentist or whatever the deal is just uh you know do me a solid make some kind of comment thumbs up or something and uh i still got some other stuff going on including i finally getting my hands on a gtx 3060 ti and i'm pretty darn happy about it it should be here hopefully the early part of the week so next week we'll take a look at how that the 3060 and last year our last model is 2070 all combined are all uh, compare with each other and see what happens there and um, see if it's all it's cracked up to be I hope so it's been a long time waiting for this thing I've been in the EVGA's queue for a long time trying to get it anyway that's all I got for right now folks so until next time uh, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you later